coming up on The Sporting Chef. I'm going to get sloppy in the kitchen today. But there's also Linky Maday, Stacy Harris, Susie Jimenez, C Dub, Dan DeVell, and Sasquatch. What do you get when you find the best fish and game chefs? Cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television. Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, the sporting chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. You know, I grew up eating Sloppy Joes, and I'm sure everybody here has had a Sloppy Joe. Do they still make manwich in a can where you take ground meat and then you dump this deal on it? So Sloppy Joe is normally kind of a sweet barbecue saucy flavor, and it's normally done with ground beef. You stick it in a hamburger bun. Today I'm going to have my version, uh, a little bit spiced up, and I call it a, a Sloppy Jose, for lack of a better term. I've taken venison, ground venison. I used a Weston grinder with venison and pork shoulder. The venison is so very lean, that's why we want to add something that's uh, a little fattier to it. You can use fatty ground beef, like a 25, 30% ground beef also. So we've got venison, we've got pork, and I'm going to do my version of Sloppy Joe. And I'm going to go fast today. We've got a very, very full show with a whole bunch of people sharing a whole bunch of information for you to use. And while the meat is browning, I want you to check out Stacy Harris, who puts her southern spin on a very traditional piccata-like dish. I'm going to show you a wild turkey piccata recipe. This is a fantastic recipe, and it's simple and elegant. So if you're having company come over, this is what you need to make them. What I did, I pounded out some turkey meat, and I made it to about an eighth of an inch thick. And then all you need to do is put it in some seasoned flour. I just put salt and pepper in the flour and dredge it in there really nice and really good and pat it in there. I put it into my buttermilk mixture. Some people may want to use eggs for this. Eggs with a, just a dab of water will do the same thing. And then into my breadcrumbs. Get it good and coated. I have my vegetable oil heating up in my Camp Chef cast iron skillet. It's huge and it's wonderful. It's very heavy and it does the job right. I want this to get crisp and brown on the first side before you turn it. It's okay for you to lift it up and look at it and see, and I've got that going on on that one. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there for about one more minute, and then I'm gonna make this fabulous sauce that makes it piccata. You can find this recipe in my cookbook, Tracking the Outdoors In. I have another cookbook that has great wild game in it too, Sustainable Living, and you can find it on Amazon or any store near you. I'm gonna remove the pieces of meat onto a plate, and I'm gonna let that rest while I make this incredible sauce. Now, you don't need a whole lot of fat in your pan to make this sauce, and if you do have too much fat in your pan, it might be good to um, empty it out a little bit and just leave a little bit of the drippings in the pan. All right, I'm ready for the sauce. So all I need is a little bit of wine. And usually I use white wine. This, okay. A little bit of chicken stock. Probably about half and half for this and just let it reduce and get a little bit thick. In the end, you're gonna only have a couple of tablespoons of liquid. What you're trying to do is concentrate the flavors, and that's what reducing does. Now I'm going to add my capers. Then I'm going to add cold butter. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of cold butter to the sauce. Once the butter has melted, I like to just spoon this wonderful sauce over my turkey. And then I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice. 
And that's going to brighten all those great flavors. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of parsley to give it even more flavor and to dress it up a little bit. Isn't that beautiful? The venison and the ground shoulder is adequately browned. I've got some peppers, celery, onion that I'm going to add to this. But I want you to know that when I grind my venison, what I like to do is I take a food saver bag and I freeze it in large chunks. And then when I want to grind it, I thaw out the large chunks as opposed to grinding a big giant mess of venison and then making burgers out of it. Do it in large chunks, thaw it, and use about as much as you're going to eat in about a week or so. And if you've ever had freezer burn, there's a really easy way to avoid that. Watch this. You know, the only way to ensure that your fish and game tastes freshest and best is to use a Food Saver Game Saver vacuum packaging system like this Wingman. Oxygen is the enemy. If you wrap your game in butcher paper or if you use plastic bags, or I've even seen people take their whole ducks and geese and stick them into bread sacks and stick them into the freezer, what that will do is potentially and probably expose those ducks in that game to oxygen, which is going to create freezer burn. Now you can tell freezer burn, it's that greenish, brownish, dry skin on the outside of a bird or a piece of venison. That's bad. Packaging with a food saver, game saver system will absolutely prevent freezer burn. Not only that, but it will make sure that your game tastes freshest tastes better than ever. Really, you need to invest in one of these Food Saver Game Saver units. I promise you won't regret it. This will last you a long time and your game will taste as good as it ever could. South of the border, Sloppy Jose's, Linky, Susie, C-Dub, Dan, and Buddy are all ahead. Take a breather. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm making my version of Sloppy Joe's. Browned venison and pork, onion, celery, peppers. That's bell pepper with the onion, celery. This is jalapeno pepper. Give it a little bit of heat, and I'm gonna give this a stir, and I'm going to cook this until the onions are, as usual, translucent. And while I'm doing this, I want you to check out Linky Madei, I met Linky years ago, actually a couple years ago, at Taste of Atlanta when she was in charge of some big thing there in the streets of Atlanta, great food festival. And oddly enough, here she is on our show now. There are few things quite as tasty as a nice seared or grilled or smoked salmon. Salmon is so nice and buttery. It's something that, you know, you don't have to do a whole lot to it, but I will say something I always do to nice buttery things is add extra butter. So today I'm going to do a nice lemon dill butter salmon slider. That is absolutely a beautiful piece of salmon and this will be good for about mm, four sliders. Okay, so for this compound butter we're going to do um, some great flavor profiles. We're going to do some dill which is really nice and crisp and lemony um, along with some garlic. And then we're also going to introduce some salt, some pepper, and then of course our lemon. So let's get busy. Now something else that I sometimes do, just to help your butter relax just a little bit, is to add a hint of olive oil. Then we're going to take our salmon, we're going to seed it, season it very lightly with some salt, and then some pepper. And then we're going to take this butter and we're going to top it on top of our salmon. And then this is going to go in a skillet on top of my grill. Um, I take another cast iron skillet and I pop it on top of it. That way it almost traps the heat and it cooks the entire thing without you having to flip it. All right guys, so while your salmon is grilling, this is a very easy yogurt sauce to do. So we have some Greek yogurt, some salt, some ground black pepper. We're also going to add a little bit of lemon zest, also some lemon juice. We're also going to add some dill, some chopped dill. And then you have the perfect sauce 
for your slider. One of the other things you can start doing while your salmon is cooking is go ahead and slice your avocado and your tomatoes. Look how beautiful. I mean, you can't match this. It's absolutely gorgeous. We're going to sit that there for a second and let's assemble our sliders. I will say this. You guys know this by now. I am in love with butter. So while this is sitting here, we're going to add just a small, teensy, tiny little drop of butter. Um, I've got some dinner rolls here. You can find some potato sliders if you will. So we're going to do a little bit of the yogurt sauce. Then we're going to add some lettuce. Now, what I usually like to do just like mix up a little spring mix. And then we're going to bring the tomato. And then comes the yummy piece of goodness of the salmon. And it should be so nice and flaky that you should be able to just get a nice little piece with or without the skin. Now, if you want, you can add more of the sauce. Or if you want, you can add some creamy pieces of avocado to the mixture. And you have the perfect, beautiful sliders ever. Guys, happy camping and slider cooking. You know, Linky was in season eight of the Food Network's Next Food Network star. Susie Jimenez, there's a little salt, who is another one of our sporting chefs, was in season seven of the Next Food Network star. Susie's coming up next while I try and gather my thoughts. I've got cumin, oregano, and chili powder, and a little bit of brown sugar because the sloppy joes that I ate were always a little bit on the sweet side, kind of a barbecue-y sweet, and that's why I put the sugar in, and that's why we have Susie Jimenez, because she's both sweet and spicy. So there's a proper way of roasting a bell pepper, and the reason that I'm asking you to learn this is because not only do you have to go the French way and do the you know, rice at the bottom, the sauce on the top, and the garnish. You can actually stuff everything into one pepper that already has all this flavor that's been roasted. It's got the smoky and the nice, uh, especially the nice sweet flavor that a bell pepper gives you. So, all you need to do, just eat the camp chef, right? And what you're looking for is for this to get nice and black. But what I mean by black, it needs to be black all the way around in order for it to be easy to peel. So Camp Chef made this bell pepper perfect. I'm gonna turn this off. One of the perfect things about this is you're gonna put it in a little plastic bag or a bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. Pull it out after about 10 minutes. And what this plastic is causing is for it to steam. You can see all the nice steam in there. So it's gonna make it very easy for you to peel this pepper. And after that, a little bowl of water. and just remove all of this nice charcoal skin. You can do this with poblano peppers, jalapenos. I mean, you name it, it's done. And then just pull off this top part out. Make sure you get the seeds, because they're a little bit bitter. And then I'm just gonna open this guy up. I would stuff this with many different things. I mean, one of my biggest things is to make chile relleno, so you can do that with poblanos. This one I'm planning on stuffing with quinoa and a little bit of wild game, putting some mole on top of it but you can just imagine. I mean, quinoa, lentils, ground beef, chicken. There's a thousand different ways to stuff it. So grab your favorite pepper, and roast it on the Camp Chef. Corned venison, things you should know about your kitchen knife, and venison backstrap are all about to happen right here on The Sporting Chef. You know, there's a whole lot going on on the Sporting Chef show today. Fortunately for some of you, there's not a whole lot of time for me. I've got my ground venison, peppers, onions, homemade fresh tomato salsa made by the best salsa maker on the Sporting Chef crew. As I understand it, he hasn't gotten into this yet. A little tequila. Now I'm going to give this a stir. I want this to be eventually kind of a barbecue-y, tender, Sloppy, Jose, this is C-Dub, and he has corned venison. Scott, 
People are always looking for a new appetizer, you know, the way to sit down at the end of the day, get things started, and you can do chicken wings and some of the tired old things like fried zucchini. But what we like to do, we like our corned venison with homemade hot mustard. Okay, and here's my uh, corned venison, and this is off Eye of Round, off a little old white tail buck, and I corned it. And in our powerless cooking modules, we do a deal on uh, corning, uh, venison, beef, whatever you want, but it's a, a way of showing folks how to preserve stuff. And so we have some toasted sesame seeds. So let's make this hot mustard. Now we're going to start out with some Coleman's hot mustard, and we're going to use the whole can. As people notice in my camp, I don't do a lot of precise measuring, but uh, on this one, I want it to come out about the same, so I'm going to do two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, and the wind is helping me measure there, and I just want to mix this all up, and then I'm going to do a couple teaspoons of salt, and then the only other ingredients is some uh, red wine vinegar and a little vegetable oil, and I'm going to add my liquid ingredients, and this is a, a quick hot mustard, and one of those things, the more you use it, the hotter it gets. And it will also, as it sets and refrigerates, it will get a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to pour some in my little cup there. I have my seeds all done. And there is quick hot mustard. Thanks for sending me the Michael David Freak Show. It's a perfect wine to wash down a little bit of my corn venison and seeds. All right, I can smell a little bit of tequila coming out of my sloppy Jose. I'm going to add a little hot sauce, and then I'm going to add a little barbecue sauce. But first, I want you to check out Dan DeVell, who's going to give you a little tip about kitchen knife basics. Let's talk a little bit about the knives you might want to have in your kitchen. Now, every chef will tell you there's a three basic knife set you're going to need. Small paring knife, this is for small detailed cuts, such as coring an apple. Your go-to chef's knife. It'll range from six to eight inches long. A few people prefer a knife up to 10 inches long. Have a good sturdy handle. And most modern knives have a facility, a handle built in to allow a pinch grip so you can pinch up on the blade such as this. Another knife you might want to have is a serrated knife. This is generally relocated to just cutting bread, but People who are afraid of sharpening will start using this for cutting everything, because this knife's dull and this knife's dull. Other knives you might find useful. This is a classic boning knife. The curved shape, the handle, big stocky handle and the short blade. Short narrow blade allows you to get in, so if you can get in the knuckles of a bird when you're trying to break down a chicken, that knife works really good for that. This is an Asian style knife called the Santuco getting more common in the kitchen today. It's a standard utility knife. You'll use this where you would use a chef's knife or even a smaller utility knife. It's a little bit shorter blade. A longer blade like this slicer is useful for breaking down large cuts of meat. You have a large roast, you can slice that roast up. And more rarely used, but sometimes really fun, is a good heavy cleaver. This is good not only for chasing zombies, if you have a, a teenage girl like I do at home. This works well as a deterrent as well as cutting up chicken. All right, so I decided to add a little barbecue sauce just to make it more sloppy Jose-ish. I'm gonna give it a stir. This is gonna go on warm flour tortillas. You could also put this in a bun just like you do that sloppy Joe. Here's another guy who can be a little sloppy. This is Buddy, who's doing brined venison backstrap. All right, Scott, we're over here and we're cooking some backstrap. This is one of my favorite ways of doing it. I brined this backstrap for seven days. And we got the camp chef real tough out here. After seven days, you rinse it off real good. And it's gonna be like cooking a piece of tuna. Now look at that, seven days, ain't no blood run out of it, and there's not gonna be any blood run out of it. You eat that thing rare in the middle like that, it's 
going to be just as tasty, tender, and as moist. You can see I had to put some bacon out here to fry it in. So go ahead and try this one time. Let me know what you think. One of my favorite ways of eating it. Final assembly is just around the corner. Stick around and I'll show you what it looks like. There it is, a whole bunch of stuff happening on the Sporting Chef show today. This is my Sloppy Jose. Again, I mentioned that you could do it either on a bun or in soft flour tortillas. You know, with my Sloppy Jose's, I'm going to drink Yellow Hammer Rebellion. And how do I keep it cold? Orion coolers, Arctic ice. Between the two of them, your beer will stay frosty, frosty cold. And I really like a cold beer. I also like all the people that have been on the show today our two Food Network gals. We've got Linky Madej and Susie Jimenez. We also had Dan DeBell, Stacy Harris, C-Dub, and Sasquatch, AKA Buddy T. Please check out our sponsors. Go to all the social media places where we hang out. Go to sportingchef.com and we'll see you right here next time.